Hello and welcome back. This is Rambles Mailbag. I'm here. Joining me, ladies and gentlemen, OJ is here. Yes, indeed. Ready to answer your questions. You got way too much energy for this, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. We have to dial it back a little bit there. Okay. So, I'm sorry. I crush your spirit. I didn't mean to. It'll inflate again. I didn't mean to bully you. Don't worry about it, man. Mailbag's supposed to be fun time. Happy fun time, mailbag fun time, happy time. All right, so this will be our mailbag for January of 2012. This month went really fast, didn't it? Obnoxiously fast. It was pretty crazy, man. What's going on here? I know, dude. I still haven't seen you since, what, before Christmas? I don't even know. Oh, Magfest, about- yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that happened. <laughs> so, so as always, you can send your questions and comments into the mailbag through PMs, through Twitter, or by simply leaving a comment on the show videos on YouTube. Or on this video, too, you can do the same thing. And then we'll put them into the larger database, and we'll try to answer them in a timely fashion. Or you can actually um, submit them to geekfiregifts.com, which is OJ's website. Mm-hmm. And you can actually download this mailbag to your computer or phone or whatever you have, whatever you want. Robot brain. At geek, yeah, so at geekfiregifts.com slash the show. So the theme for this edition of the mailbag will be personal questions once again. Because we have about 10 million of them. So, uh, let's do it. Let's get to the questions. Let's get to the comments. OJ, take it away, good sir. All right. This is from Plywood Cutout Cow. I love John's view on life. Live it up while you can still draw air. My parents always raised me to believe I could never be content with mediocrity. But I tossed their standards out the door and realized I would still have a positive outlook even if I were homeless and broke. Stay strong, Ramborgia. Yeah, he's referring to an episode of the show where I was talking about... Uh, actually, I don't know what I was talking about. We talked about a lot of things there. But um, here's, the, here's the deal. I agree. And who, who is to decide what is success, what is mediocrity, what is failure? Who, who decides this? Right? You decide it for yourself. Ah, yes, OJ. You are wise. I have taught you well, sir. Yes, you have. <laughs> It's all about, you know, setting personal goals for yourself and finding personal happiness in yourself. And, of course, your life is about bringing joy to others and and happiness to others. But you can't really make others happy if you're not personally in a good place first. Right? Mm -hmm. You agree with that? Uh Uh-huh. So there's no no set strategy for really obtaining, you know, like happiness or peace or anything like that. You know, we've all heard of the stories of people who have tremendous fame and fortune and then it turns out, you know, they have more problems than anyone else that you know. Yeah. So there isn't one thing where it's like, this is what success is, and, and this is what, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's not anything that's like a physical or a place or something you could have, you know. It's, it's a place inside yourself. So accomplish the things you want to accomplish. Go to the places you want to go to. And then uh, be the kind of person that you would enjoy hanging around, you know. Yeah, just try, anything, try to make... Anything to say about this? Yeah, I mean, try to do what makes you happy, and if you're happy, you'll be, it'll be a lot easier for you to make others around you happy as well. If, if you're not happy with yourself, you're, it's going to be hard to be happy with other people. So you've got to find what's, what's good for you, what you want to do, what makes you you, and what makes you happy. And that's the important right. thing, you know? Not what other people tell you should make you happy. All right, we're taught from a young age that you know, to produce, to produce, to produce... Because that's what society wants, because that's what's better for them. <laughs> you know, the more you make, the more they're going to make, and the more they, more stuff you're going to buy, the more oh, money yeah. you have, consume. things like that. Consume. Right. It's create and consume, you know, but that perhaps doesn't work out for everyone. Maybe some people. <laughs> and you got to realize this about life, you know. Th- this thing could end at any point of any day at any time. So every day got to make sure you smile, you laugh. You know, look for the positive side of things and, uh, you know, enjoy yourself. Shoot someone right? a smile when you're walking down the street, man. They'll either think you're crazy you know, or you might brighten their day. If things suck, do whatever you possibly can, whatever you physically possibly can to make them better and improve them, you know. There's Just, been, like, how many stories are there of people that come from terrible circumstances, awful, you know, upbringings, terrible places, and they wind up being, you know, great successes and, and accomplishing great things so yeah don't let don't let negativity stop you 
you know, whether it's uh, the people around you, substances, whatever it is, whatever negative thing there is around you, you know, do your best to avoid it, have confidence in yourself, and then uh, do what must be done for you yourself to uh, get where you want to go. So that's all I have to say about that. Wise and true. Yeah, that is correct. <laughs> Let's continue. Okay. This okay. is from Drunken Samurai 18. Wow, did you really plead not guilty to speeding? I didn't even know you could go to court for that. Or even plead. Yeah, I, well, I know where this one came from. This came from an episode of the show. I told a story that when I was much younger and stupider, I got pulled over doing a 90 and a 55. And I should have mentioned this. I forgot to mention this. I was in my mother's minivan. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing 90 55 in this in this big minivan. It was a, uh, I think it was like a, a Voyager, Ford Voyager. Or, I don't even know if that was Mercury what it was. Mercury Voyager? That, yeah, maybe that's what you were in the thing quite a bit. But. Oh, yeah, I remember that band. So, so I got this ticket. I pled not guilty. I got called to court over a year later. And then the cop doesn't show up. So I get off on the entire thing. I, got, I, I paid nothing for my crimes. So, yeah, you can plead not guilty to any type of charge against you. Yeah, you can plead not guilty to all kinds of things. Yeah, and you can plead not guilty to any charge against you in the U.S. It includes everything from, you know, speeding to your taillight being out to, you know, murder. You know, you can plead not guilty to anything. Especially, like, when you get your ticket, you have two different options. You say you're guilty, and you're basically going to mail it off with a check included, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Or you can say you're not guilty, you check a box... This is not guilty. You send it in like that. And then eventually you're going to be called to court. Right? Yes. And I always recommend that you say not guilty. I, I pretty much always say uh, recommend that you do that, except for once, one instance, which I'll get to. But uh, always say you're not guilty. Even if you actually were speeding and you know you were speeding, you still do it. Okay? Because what happens is you're going to go to court. And what happens is in order for them to try to, like, speed along the process, the cops try to make deals with you before you go before the judge, right? Just to try to, like, speed along the process. So, for instance, they'll say, the cop will come up to you and they'll say, okay, um, we charge you with speeding, but what we'll do for you is we'll reduce it to a parking violation or, like, a taillight violation. And it's a reduced charge. You're going to pay less money than uh, if if you're found guilty of this charge. And, um... You could plead guilty to that instead. And then you do it, and then like the whole thing's over, and you just pay. Hmm. Which is really bizarre if you think about it. Right? Yeah. It's kind of strange. Like, they, why, why is there like these deals going on? Like, why does this happen? Does this ever happen to you? Did you ever... No, I've never been in that situation. You've gotten tickets, though. Maybe. You just paid... You said you were guilty. Kinda. You out of state or something? No. Yeah. But it was like... It was three, three to five hours away from where I needed to be. Right, During okay, we're talking about speed. that. Right, okay. We're going to get to that, too. Do we have to? Oh, yeah, we're gonna, well, well, I'm going to touch upon that whole thing. <sighs> but that's how it is. The whole, the whole court system is basically like a business. You might as well be in, like, a Walmart or, like, any, any type of business. Because you go in, they try to, like, you have to pay for something, they'll haggle with you, and then, um, you know, you'll come to an agreement of what you're going to pay, and then you basically, there's even, like, a cashier. There's literally a cashier in the court before you go, you pay her and she gives you change and everything. It's a freaking cashier, dude. No. Oh. Well, it's basically it's basically a business, the whole thing. And um, so that's one thing that could happen if you if you say you're not guilty, you go. You could get a reduced charge because they don't want to like bother putting you in front of the, the judge and the cop has to talk and they have to figure it out. So they'll just try to cut these deals and, and get the thing done quickly. So right there, you're gonna you're gonna save money because most likely they're gonna give you a uh, lesser charge, right? Mm-hmm. Or the other thing that could happen is what happened to me. The cop could not show up, and then you get off completely on the whole thing, right? So what happens is you get called to court. You cannot go to court once. You have to let them know. You say, I'm not going to be at court, and then they'll change it to another date, and the cop cannot be at court once, but they won't tell you that. Like, you'll go, and they'll just be like, he's not here. You have to come back. But if the cop doesn't show up twice, then you get off on the entire thing. You're totally off the hook. So, what happens, like, especially in my area, the court system is so bogged down with action that you might get called to court, like, a year later. Uh. 
And who knows if, if the guy even works there anymore or if he even works in this area, if he's even a cop anymore. So chances are, like, you might not have to pay anything at all. Right? Yeah. So now I understand, like, it's a pain to go to court. You know, you have to take off from work. You got, like, whatever else you're supposed to be doing that day. It's a big pain in the neck. Uh, we're responsible. You have to change your plans. You have to go to court and deal with these people. I'll be nice. I'll just call the people. But uh, yeah. it's definitely a good idea to, to say you're not guilty. And you might you might actually see a nice show if you go to court. For instance, I remember being in court, and the judge was going ape shit on this guy because the guy wore to court like a dirty wife beater and like like pants that were like stained with oil or something. Yeah. And the guy was just going nuts on him. He was like, "How dare you, you know, come to court like this?" And um, it was it was it was pretty humorous to watch. But then again, it's like the guy, maybe the guy's coming from work or something. He's like a mechanic or something. I don't know. You know, like they don't tell you what the, you're supposed to wear. What if he owns a business and he's working as a mechanic and he has to go straight from his business? He can't leave. But he was literally yelling at the guy for like ten minutes, and I was just sitting there like, "What? What is going on, man?" It's like this is disgraceful. How dare you? <laughs> that was pretty crazy. But um, so like I said. When we say you're, uh, you're not guilty if you get a speeding ticket. But there is one instance where you can get screwed. This is kind of like similar to what, what uh, OJ brought up. You get a ticket out of state or very far from your home and you plead not guilty, they're going to expect you to appear in court in that area, in that state. Yep. Right? So if you're like several hours from home, you're probably not going to want to travel um, you know, for hours and upon hours to maybe reduce this ticket by, like, you know, a little bit. You know, you're probably going to spend the 100 200 whatever dollars it is. And um, this is this is exactly why you always hear stories of people saying they got pulled over or targeted just because they were out of state or they had out of state plates. Yeah. They were just pulled over for no reason. Because, like, that's, that's pretty much a guaranteed payment to that state. The cop gets you, gives you some stupid ticket, and you're going to go home. Of course, you're just going to pay it because there's no way you're going to, you know, travel to... Uh, bumble ass wherever in USA to uh, pay for this. So I think they're also going to look for college students coming, going to and from places during spring break and times right. like that. Because if you're in a car that's obviously like old beat up car, you've got a bunch of couple of kids in the car. Forget it, man. You're done. This is what happened to you. Maybe. What happened? Tell us. Yeah, I was driving home for spring break in a 1987 Buick Century, which is not a fast car by any stretch of the imagination. And, yeah, I got pulled over by a very verbally abusive police officer. Yeah. He was yelling a lot, you know, freaking out. He didn't even actually pull me over. I was driving. He was parked on the right side of this, uh, on the right side. He was outside of his car. And right. I was going down a hill. I, I had just drank some water, so I hadn't seen the speedometer. I was going down a hill, my foot on the brake, obviously. And he starts waving, so I think, okay, he wants me to get out of the right lane. So I go to the left lane, and I keep driving, and I go back to the right lane. And I'm a little shaken by the experience because the guy was gesturing wildly. I don't know what he was doing. I couldn't hear him. He was just going, waving around. Right. And a few minutes later, my friend says, uh, John, yeah. I check the rearview mirror, and there's a police car behind me. I pull over, and he's like, what, you were trying to get away or something? I'm like, no, <laughs> no. How old's a girl in the back of the car? Um, she's older than I am. She's 21. And it, the, the dude was basically going out of his way to make me feel like as small a person as humanly possible. Right. It was Maybe terrible. He, he wanted the girl, it was an underage girl. I'm turned on by that. Ugh. I have to make myself look good in front of her. So he's trying to put you down. Cause he uh, going he, out with he her, was maybe. a very, I, I was very upset with this police officer. He, I don't think he was, a good example of what a police officer should be. Yeah. And I mean, and I was, the, the, I think when it would have, the time when I would have had to come back would have been like, I think during finals week or something, like they said, Oh, and blah, blah, blah weeks. And yeah. I can't drive three hours in the middle of finals week. Right. The so middle, of, paid. middle of nowhere, in New York. And that's probably when you could have gotten off on because you didn't really do anything wrong. Well, I, but, I, I don't uh, know how, screwed. see, that's the thing. He made me doubt. This is the, this is the worst thing about this police officer. He made me doubt myself. I didn't think I was speeding. I was driving very, I was driving very paranoidly. Yeah. And the, I was going down a hill. I don't think, I don't know if I was going fast. I wasn't looking at the speedometer at that point. Later on, we found out my speedometer was off by five miles per hour. Right. My dad and I tested it at the end of the year. We drove him in front of him in a car in front of my mom and I, and she was she was 
asking him, asked him later, okay, how fast were you going at this point? And he said, um, I was doing 60. I was telling you to go faster. We were on the throughway. You were going so slow or something like that. Or it was backward or something. Whatever, we were five miles per hour faster than the speedometer said. Yeah. Which isn't that much. So I don't know. It was just a terrible situation. I've had some crazy stuff happen. Like, I remember driving home, I think, it was like rush hour, and uh, like a fleet of cops just pulled over like everyone on the road. Oh, that was right when they changed the speed limit, right? I don't know. I, I, I think it was like a couple years ago. Yeah. It was basically told, like, told this. this is literally what it was. It was the end of the month. And the people always say is like they're trying to reach a quota, I guess, Which for the month. Some people say they don't have. Right. I, I'm not going to say they do or don't because I don't know, but that's yeah. what people really say. So it was like the end of the month. Maybe, tr- maybe there is a quota. They're trying to get a certain amount of um, tickets given or reach a certain amount of you know payment you know for the state or whatever. So like you know rush hour, everyone's pretty much speeding because everyone kind of goes with traffic. Yeah. So everyone's going maybe uh, 10 miles per hour over the speed limit like everyone on the road. They, they pull over like seven cars. And I was one of the cars. It was like, what is going on, man? Yeah. It was like a fleet that just came out of nowhere. Like, boo, boo. Everybody got taken down. Which is stupid because you're driving with traffic. No one was doing anything unsafe. Yeah. You know. Um, I got pulled over one time leaving work. I was working at Toys R Us. So this is pretty crazy because I'm leaving work. Just pull out. There's like a cop in the parking lot. Pulls me over. And he goes, oh, that was an unsafe start. What? <laughs> yeah, it was insane. And, like, everyone was leaving work. So as people were, like, exiting the store, all my coworkers, they see me pulled over by this cop, like, right in, front of, you know, like, right in the distance. And, like, what is going on with him? Uh, and it was so annoying because I, like, I had, like, a really awful day. I paid, like, you know, six bucks an hour or whatever it was. <laughs> and then the cop gave me a ticket. That was basically, like, my entire, entire week's pay. And he goes, you have to come to Hartford for the court. Hartford? I got pulled over in Danbury, so that's like that's like a good what two hours away was he from a there. State trooper? I don't know. It was insane, man. So that was really annoying. Then there was one time where I was with Phil. This was like 2005, maybe, and um, I had like pretty much just met like I'd, I'd known him for a while. But we were like just close, and we were with a big group of people in his car. Driving through Massachusetts, of course. Uh oh. Get pulled over for no reason. Cop starts busting her balls. Where are you guys going? All this stuff. Looks at Phil's license. For some reason, on Phil's license, it says that he's supposed to have glasses. Right? And okay. I don't know I don't know if he's supposed to. I don't know. We'll have to ask him about this. I don't know if that's a mistake or whatever. Somebody ask him. I don't know. So he goes, you can't drive anymore. <laughs> You're not allowed to drive the car anymore. So I think some of the other guys maybe didn't have licenses or had suspended or something. I don't know. So I had to drive his car. Aww. Like, like I have to, so I had to drive Phil's car for like the way home or whatever through the state. Oh, and then lovely. We, just, like, switched, we like switched drivers which we got over the state line. It was weird. And then gave him a ticket for like nothing. Yeah. Um, one thing, you know, about speed limits. It, it, let me know if you guys have heard of this. A friend of mine was telling me there was a story about these two guys who went on a two lane highway and drove right next to each other at 55 miles per hour, the speed limit on the highway. Yeah, yeah. To see what would happen. And that it created a humongous traffic backup. Like, they were driving right. for maybe an hour or two at the right. speed limit. It made this gigantic traffic mess. Right. Um, well, they don't want you to not speed because they need people to speed. Well, that's the thing. So, if you guys have <laughs> heard of this story, you, please let us know. People, link it to us. Yeah. I want to I read about it, and I haven't been able to find it yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard about that. Oh, no, like, that's the whole thing. They need, like, they need some people to break the speed limits so they could get paid. Uh, that's extra revenue. That's, that's, you know, millions of dollars a year. So if they want no one to speed, you can do it. Why does my car go 110 miles per hour when the speed limit's 55? <laughs> I don't know. What if you're being chased by robbers who hacked their car? The entire thing is completely, the whole thing is random, dude. There's people that go out every day in speed. They can never get a ticket if they're in the, you know, the right place at the right time. There's people that you speed one time and you get uh, you get caught. I know what that's like. That was it. <laughs> then when you go to court, that's completely random because it's so strange. And they, they offer these deals, and, and the guys that show up, then you didn't do anything wrong. What if there is a guy? What if there is a guy going 100 miles per hour in a 50, you know, uh, multiple times, and then he goes to court, and the cops out there, and then you know he's not getting punished for this, and eventually kills somebody, you know? 
Yeah. So the whole thing is backwards, man. And uh, that's my rant about uh, speeding and all that. I, I haven't gotten one in a long time because I don't. I just make sure I'm, I'm not paying for this anymore, and uh, yeah. I definitely take my time, and you know that's it. So my car right now doesn't really go fast. It's <laughs> another thing, but I also got into a terrible car wreck once. We'll talk about that another day. I'll save that one <sighs> when it's pertinent to the conversation. It's not gonna make sense now. Okay. But I was in a terrible car wreck that I probably shouldn't have walked away from, but I did. Well, I'm glad you did. Driving sucks, man. Yeah, I, I don't like it. I want to move to a city. And just... There you go. It's so expensive and annoying. Yeah. So, all right, let's move on. Me. Okay. This one's from Brown Power Ranger 66. When I picture John Rambo as a kid, I imagine he still wears a hat and has a full beard. Did I always, did I always do that? Wear a hat or have a full beard? You didn't really know when I was a kid. I was like 14 or something I met you, right? Yeah. So I was, I guess I always did have a beard and a full, and a hat, yeah. (laughs) I think I grew a beard when, uh, I could. It was probably like around 20 years old, maybe. Yeah. As well as it was because I don't like shaving. (laughs) And there's a lot of cool, there's a lot of cool people that have beards, so I was like, I'll just do that. Cactus Jack. Oh, that guy's awesome. I was a big Cactus Jack fan. You know, he's got a beard. <laughs> Who else has one? A lot of people do. I don't know. I just, I just dig it. So. Will Wheaton. Yeah. I don't know who that is. He has a goatee, doesn't he? He's got a weird facial hair. It kind of bothers me. <laughs> okay. What about you? You're, can you grow a beard, first of all? Um, I grew a goatee freshman year to be shaggy for Halloween. I remember that. That was amazing, actually, because the goatee grew in like bright, like this bright brown red color, which was the exact same color I bleached my hair to. So you grow you grow facial hair that's red? Yeah. That's, but what is that? Irish. Why would, wouldn't your hair be the same color? It's different. I don't know, man. <laughs> it, it came out Just redder. Don't grow any, please don't grow anything. Just no, I, 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 yeah. I've got an electric razor. I don't need to worry about shaving. You've got, you got enough hair as it is. That's, that's also kind of interesting about you because you're very like anal about shaving your face. Because we were at uh, we were going to the conventions. You're like, I have to shave every day. I'm oh, shaving right minutes, now. It's man. Yeah, but like you, you have crazy long hair, but you're you, don't, you want no nothing should be on your face whatsoever. That like that like freaks you out. It doesn't freak me out. I just rather shave if I have. The All right, time. I don't know. It's kind of odd to me that you're still like I have to shave right now. Got my way. I didn't oh, doing come this on, right dude. now. I'm like shoving you guys around. There were two sinks, man. <laughs> two sinks. All right, let's get the show on the road. All right, this one's from King Dean. Move, John. You lied to the Ramborgia. You said you're professional at whatever you do. YouTube.com slash watch, question mark, V equals. <laughs> Don't read that. <laughs> All right. Here's the deal. This is, he put a link. That's basically what that was. <laughs> this is the story behind this. So Phil and I were doing some kind of playthrough. I don't know what it was because I didn't actually follow the link. So I'm just going <laughs> off memory. I'm just going off memory here. I didn't look at it. Well, I, don't remember, I don't remember the exact situation. But for some reason, he said to me, you know, John, be a professional. I don't know why he said that. I don't know if I was like messing up in the game or if I was saying something crazy. I don't know what it was. But I responded by saying, I'm always professional. Okay? And then he says, even it's sucking dicks. So then I respond by saying, I do not suck dicks. But if I did, if that was something I chose to do, then I would indeed be a professional at it. Okay? And people thought this was like a great thing. It was like one of the things people quote all the time. I said, even though I don't even know, I don't even remember like what video this was or anything. But uh, I actually forgot about it until people always bring it up. So this is what happened, and later on in an episode of the show, this was like two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I made the claim that I, nor my channel, will never be professional, okay? <laughs> and I said this because I personally like art when it's like very loose and uh, kind of dirty and kind of messed up, because and, cause when stuff's like overly polished and perfect, it's not as interesting to me, so. It's not real. Right. It's, it's like almost, it's overdone, right? So to answer this gentleman, what's his name? King King Dean Dean Move. Calling me a liar, sir. I'm not a liar. My explanation is this. While I do have the ability and the capabilities to be a professional, I instead choose not to be for the sake of good art. That's the (laughs) sacrifice I make. Okay? So, while I am professional, at the same time, I am not. So I did not lie, sir. That is my explanation to this. 
Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yes. Shall I continue, sir? Yes, sir. This one's from Jittery User. No, this one's from Cra- Cr- Crazy, Crazy, or no. Crazy Dino. Crazy Dino. Today, I broke my wrist on ice. Fell twice. So what do I do? What? So what do I do? I, <laughs> ow. So what Let's do I do? I... Do I listen to the best show on YouTube? At least this day got a little better. Crazy Dino, I'm sorry to hear about your wrist. Please heal swiftly and well. Yeah, we, it'll be okay. You, you listen to the show. Yeah. You're, you're a Rambordian member. You will, you, will, you will feel nothing. You will wake up tomorrow completely uh, perfect. It, it, your convalescence will be aided greatly by listening to our audio goodness. Yes. That sucks, though. I mean, yeah. uh, I remember... Yeah, I mean... Um, a lot of people I know fall, fall on ice all the time. Oh, okay. yeah. Uh, honestly, though, when I fall on ice, I do something weird. Yeah. Most people, you know, when they slip... I've seen you do it. Yeah, when people slip... They, I'm to bring this up in a minute. They kind of stop. When I slip, I jump. Like, when I slip, I lift my... I jump off the ground and then land, like, flat. I And this, the weird thing yeah, is... Yeah, that is weird. I fall very rarely. You take, like, a wrestling bump. Yeah, I, I don't... A what? You take like a wrestling bump, like you fall like right on your back. Wait, I don't fall though. Not that often. No, no I've I, seen you fall, dude. Not that often. All right, do you remember this? Oh. We went. <laughs> Here's a story for you. I don't know if you remember this one. It's gonna freak you out. <sighs> My memory's this good. We went to Stop It Shop, which is a big grocery store around here. I don't know if you guys may have not heard of it. I don't know. OJ buys a gallon of water. <laughs> <laughs> exits the store. <laughs> slips on ice, throws the gallon up in the air, comes <laughs> crashing down on the floor, explodes, <laughs> falls on his back. <laughs> we had to go inside and uh, complain. We yelled at them, I think. <laughs> Do you remember this? No. You don't? No, I think I hit I'm my head. Kidding. You must have blocked this out, man. No, dude, I've taken a lot of blows to the head, okay? We can talk about this later if we reach that question. I've taken it a lot like of blows to the head. It was like insane because you went down so fast and the water just... <laughs> explosion. I remember I went in there and I was like yelling at the, at the lady and I'm like, this is ridiculous. You have ice out there. Give us, and she gave us like a bunch of free waters. <laughs> so I, knew, I knew like... I knew that would happen if I was like really like stern about it. <laughs> this is a ridiculous situation. How dare you? We're we are human beings. What is this? We're just like animals, you know. So. <laughs> oh my. Well, I wish uh, Crazy Dino a, a good recovery. Yeah, heal, my friend. Heal. Sucks. <sighs> okay, okay. This one's from Jittery User. John, OJ, I got something of a strange question for you guys. What are the worst injuries you've had, and have they left scars? I'm talking in terms of physical injuries. <laughs> Mental, we could go places. I recently just had a tumor yeah. removed, and the stitches left behind look like a zipper running across my abdomen. Stay free and optionally ballsy. Jittery user. Yeah, uh, well, why don't you go through? Why don't you handle this one? Go ahead. Okay, I haven't had any particularly terrible injuries. I mean, I've got a bunch of quick ones I can throw at you, and one that happened when I was a little kid that did kind of scar me for a little while, but not permanently. Um, I was a little kid. I don't think I've told this story before. I Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle um, Christmas ornaments. Unless I did tell yeah. this around Christmas time. Did I tell this one? I don't think so. I went down. My, my dad bought me a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle ornament. They're all ice skating around with April. Yay. But it didn't come with a hanger, which was incredibly stupid. So we go downstairs to the basement. And uh, my dad goes to go find the hooks, and I'm hammering. I've got, I take out my toy hammer and nail, my toy hammer and nail set, and I'm hammering into a piece of wood on my what my dad called my workbench. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Put in some nails, pull them out with the hammer, hammer them back in. Then I see, ooh, there's a real nail. So I hammer that thing, and I hammer it in really well. You know, this is a big nail. Right. So I start tugging at it, trying to pull it out like I pulled out the little ones, and it won't budge. I'm like, well, that won't do. I'm gonna have to tug harder, and I keep pulling on it. The back half of the hammer, the claw part, snaps off. Wow. Goes flying and hits me in my left eye. I didn't know about this. Yeah, and then the first thing... What happened? So it hits me. I start freaking out. I shut my eyes. Like, it it kills, man. My dad comes in. He sees the hammer on the floor, the nail on the board, and (laughs) a piece of the claw hammer just lying there. (laughs) And I'm freaking out. I'm crying. I'm a little kid, man. I'm having a hissy fit. I'm flipping out. 
my mom's a nurse, so she comes down. What's the first thing my parents do? They tell me to open my eye, so they pull it open, and they shine a flashlight in it. Oh, what would that do? Like, I'm seeing stars here. What like, would that even do? Just to see if there was a scar or anything. They take me to the eye doctor. I remember staring at a green light for a while. And, yeah, yeah. there was some, some minor scarring on my left eye for a while. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Um, You're fine now. You can see and everything? Yeah, it's fine now. It's just as bad as my right eye. But as far as injuries go, I haven't had any major big ones like giant broken bones. I mean, I've stubbed broken toes before and sprained ankles. But I've taken a lot of injuries to the head. Yeah. So it started People with me getting you. my hammer stuck in an eye. People always punch you in the head. Well, yeah. <laughs> when I was a little kid, my si- I had an older sister. We were driving to my grandparents' house outside Boston. We're in the van for three hours, three and a half hours. We get there, and we're getting it. My sister gets out of the car, and she starts pulling the van shut as I'm getting out. It, it, she closes it on my head. She cool. claims she forgot I was in the car. <laughs> <laughs> when we were little kids, we had these giant wooden blocks, like four by four by four inch cubes of like oak. Like this is hardcore wood. And my sister threw yeah. them at my head. Yeah. And in middle school, um, we were doing a Native American like themed projects and stuff. So people were doing their presentations in the gym. One group was building a wigwam or teepee. They weren't doing a very good job. So this ten or this ten foot at least tall. Not a stick, a log. This thing's at least four or five inches across. It starts to fall, and everyone shouts, watch out. I'm just like, doo 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 Whack. The thing falls. Hit me right on top of the head. Like, right in the soft spot. Cool. And I bent. I don't fall down, but I just kind of stagger and stop. Just shoot. Like, collapse nearly. I'm just kind of, like, stumbling around. They, They lead me to the nurse's office, and I just keep saying, they should put warning labels on those things. For like five minutes, and they're just like, "What things? What happened?" It was, uh, yeah. You should shoot every. You should shoot the school. Uh, I don't think it made danger, yeah, but I, I don't think it did major damage. Yeah, well, I I would testify against that. <laughs> I would help your co- I would help your cause, but you know, <laughs> I'd have to be honest about a few things about you. The school's got no money. Uh-huh. Any- Wait, well, I don't know what you mean by that, but the school's got no money anyway. I don't want to rob it from them. That's true. Yeah. So what, what uh, luckily, yeah, I, did, I never had a lot of uh, physical injuries, mental. Uh, that's a whole other story. A lot of emotional scars, you know, mm-hmm. things like that. I never had any surgeries, luckily. I never even had my wisdom teeth out yet. Oh, gosh, yeah. Have you done that? No, I'm supposed to, though. It gets oh, you worse never did the it longer like you wait. That makes me feel better that you didn't do it. it We're makes in this together now. I'm scared now. But do go on. Yeah, sometimes, like, one of them's actually coming in. I can feel it coming in. Like, it hurts every now and then, but, uh, <laughs> I don't know, it's it's expensive, you know? Yeah. I don't know, whatever, I still have them, mm-hmm. so. Um, so, yeah, I never, I never had, like, a lot of, uh, you know, I was mostly just home playing games, playing Super Nintendo and, uh, and all that stuff during, you know, during my youth, so. I kind of avoided a lot of stuff, but I did skateboard at one point quite a bit, I, got, I was actually pretty decent. Oh, I could yeah. probably, I could still bust out some stuff. Yeah. Right now, I could I could seriously get up right now and do do some ollies and I was kick flipping stuff at one point. Um, so I saw many good people wind up with a lot of good injuries at the time I was doing this. Um, I I I escaped the whole thing with all I have is a big I have a pretty decent scar on my elbow that I got. I was going down like a hill, which you're not really supposed to do with like you know a lot of the, like the boards uh, we had were more for like sort of tricks and stuff, yeah. like flat surfaces. But we all live in the suburbs, so it's like, oh, let's go down a hill, and there's, like, rocks and all kinds of stuff, and you wind up, you know, get thrown off. Yeah, and I just scrape my elbow pretty decently, and I uh, have that scar. So that's kind of like a reminder of my skateboard days. It's, it's kind of nice in a lot of ways. Yeah, actually, you reminded me of another head injury. Yeah. Um, I, was at, I was at college, and I wanted to learn to skateboard because I was living a mile away from campus. I think I got you a board, didn't I? You helped me pick out a board and stuff. So I'm trying yeah. to learn how to use this thing, but I'm too embarrassed to do it when there's people around. So I'm out, at, out, out underneath a streetlight at night, like 1 a.m., um, on a small, flat piece of sidewalk. And, you know, I'm just going back and forth, back and forth, trying to see if I can ride this thing. Pro tip, I can't. And the board goes flying out in front of me, so I go falling backwards and hit my head on the pavement. Yes, I was too dumb to wear a helmet. And I, I kind of was like, ow, ow, 
Ow. And I think I coughed up some blood. So nice. that You're wasn't good. Again. I don't know if I got a concussion or anything, but that wasn't good. <laughs> I know I was really smart in high school, uh, but college was hard. Yeah. So, so yeah, uh, so, yeah Jitter user, you as well, um, wish you the best of luck in your uh, yeah. recoveries. I don't know when this, you had this happen, but... Um, Sounds recent. I wish you the best, sir. As do I. Or a friend of ours. You've been posted many times, so um, you know, keep us updated on on your status and all that stuff. Because we care about everybody. So mm-hmm. let's Every know what's going time. on with that. All right. Okay. So this one's from Mischief two three four one. Dear OJ and John, but mostly OJ, what is your favorite type of juice, John? You're asking me first? Yeah. Uh, I like to go to Trader Joe's, which is a store that we have over here. Mm-hmm. And they have a lot of uh, fresh things, organic type of stuff. And they have a juice that I like to get is strawberry kiwi juice, Ooh. which I assume is the combination of strawberries and kiwis into a juice form. <laughs> and, I would uh, hope. I try to get it every now and then. It's really good. I tend to drink. It's, it comes in like a gallon bottle like that, and like I'll drink it too fast. You know, I'll drink it in like a, like two days. Wow. So yeah, because I like it so much. So, I, so sometimes I don't get it because it's like oh, I'm just gonna burn through it. <laughs> you know, but it's really good. Oh and yeah, that, that place is a lot of good stuff. I don't know if you if you go there, but um, um, not recently. It's a lot of natural natural juice and, and foods. It's kind of like a cuter, less snooty Whole Foods. It's smaller than that. Uh huh. It's set up. It's set up like a kind of like a little market. Yeah, but it is a chain and everything. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure there's some you know evil guy at the top of the of the building. You know, <laughs> size the skyscraper. Yeah, <laughs> shouting at lots and money on mine. Right, right. So, um, and as for myself, I think my favorite juice is pineapple, but it's followed closely by. Honestly, I love eating lemons. So lemon juice, I mean, I love lemonade more than I like pure lemon juice, but hey. And lime juice is good because you can make margaritas with it. But there's some weird juices I like to get when I go to certain restaurants, like Lulo. I don't know what it is, but it's pretty tasty. And then purple corn drink from Peru is incredibly good. Purple corn drink? Purple corn drink. It's incredibly sweet, and they put cinnamon in there. It is amazing. It's called like, uh, it starts with an M. I forgot what it's called, but it is amazing. Why didn't you mention this on the international edition I of the show? I completely forgot. I blame the head injuries. <laughs> okay. So that's what, that's what ex- I got. That's your excuse now. Yep. Hey, Remember you I told the- you about the time my sister slid my head into the car door? <laughs> oh. She uh, slammed my right. fingers in a door, too. All right. Try to get a couple more. All right. Um, uh, you go for this one. This is from Jigsaw86-2009. He says, just watch the show while cleaning my bathroom. Shittiest experience of my life. Keep up the good work, guys. I imagine that would be a shitty experience. Yeah, um, I can tell you. That's why you need to clean it. Like, you need to clean it, uh, you know, more often. Yeah, that helps. So, like, less of a build-up situation. Yeah, it's a lot harder to scrape that stuff off when it's been there for a week. But, uh, listen to the show while you clean the bathroom. People, oh, people yeah. tell me, like, people tell me all the stuff they do while they listen to it. Uh, pretty cool. I love people when they're at work. They actually listen to the show. Yeah, there's. I've heard people working, people making out, people cleaning. People uh, when they play games a lot, like the um, people play like MMOs and stuff. Like you don't need like I guess to hear a lot of things. Oh yeah, yeah. A lot of people uh, told me that. So um, it's cool, man. I I love the audio format. Like I always did because I always like just have something something playing. You don't have to like stare at it, you know. So yeah. Well, let me say one thing. My last day working at a donut store. Yeah. I'm about to leave. Like I'm, I'm about to clock out. I go check the bathroom because I was, I think I was going to use it. Wasn't a full 360, more yeah, like yeah. a 180 type of deal. Oh god! It's like okay, I'm done here. See you guys, clocking out. Counted up my tips. Bye bye. Did was, you ever use a plane bathroom? Uh, yeah. Like in the plane? Yeah. You did. You had to do it. Where were you going? Uh, Japan, Las Vegas. <laughs> Uh, Belgium or Paris. How was it? Yeah. What's going on? It actually wasn't that bad. They give you those it's little wax paper things you can put. Don't you just feel weird being in there? Oh, you're so cramped. 
you feel like you're not supposed to be there. Yeah. Like uh, it's almost like you just but like just for me like I don't I don't know if I'm supposed to go in there. It's just <laughs> the worst is you go in there and while you're in there the the turbulence light turns on. Oh yeah. And you're not supposed to be moving around. Well, they'll they'll knock on the door and be like, "Oh, let's come out." Hey, but welcome to the Louvre. I guess as long as you're sitting in there, what's the problem? I know, right? You'll be fine. It's probably the no safest sp- place to be. <laughs> you can't like be like thrown in you. You know, like you're just kind of in one room. If you hit your head, you've got sanitary paper. Let's continue talking about bathrooms. What, have you ever been to like terrible bathrooms anywhere else? Uh, like Grand Central Station is a little bit better than it used to be, but it's pretty foul sometimes. It's always just like packed. Yeah, it's, it's awful. Have you been in an Eastern style bathroom in Japan? Yeah. There, I, I can't use them. Like, they had some crazy ones, man. Around. When I first got off the plane, I was like, I don't even know what this is. <laughs> there was like so many like contraptions. It was like a private room. Yeah. But like you had to go in, then you had to figure out how to shut the door. It's like one button shuts the door, one button like opens the lid, Activation one button the turns the sink on. Yeah. One's the bidet. It was like hundred buttons in a room. It was like, I'm just trying to do what I got to do right now. Oh man, yeah. And, <laughs> I've been uh, on a plane for twenty hours, please. Hey, at least they give you a heated seat. It was just like way too. It was like way too complicated. Like, really, do we really do we really need to plug toilets into the wall? Yeah, is that really important? At a book off bookstore in Japan, uh, somebody pooped in a in a urinal. Why? I don't know. I walked in there and there's poop in the urinal. I did a I did a 180 and got out of there. Probably blamed you for it. <laughs> like, at, like they'd probably be proud. Like, oh, you think an American is dexterous enough to do that? <laughs> Come on, that takes skill. That be, that's a lot about Japan though, because like a lot of stuff's just like over. It's like overdone, like. Like like I said, like why does the toilet need to be plugged in, and like, like be like so high tech? Like just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. Like cause, just because you have the technology to do something, maybe it's like not the best application for it, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I've been to, I've been to bathrooms like you know, stores wherever, and people just completely just miss the the toilet. Oh yeah, you should like, see. It's like like did you not see it? Like what happened? You just. Decide I'm just going to go wherever I want. <laughs> that happens at my office sometimes. How does this happen? Maybe people just can't control like what they're doing. I don't doing. know. They, they, it's one of those toilet seats where it's open at the front, so so maybe you know if you've got you know so people who actually have decent aim don't have to lift the seat, but apparently this person didn't have good aim. Yeah. I mean, this is an office building. I mean, I, we share like the bathrooms are shared with other you know another company on the floor, so it's not like. It's necessarily someone from my company. I don't think it, uh, but it's bad. Like, there's people who like don't wash their hands like every time they go in there. It's awful. It's like, yeah, oh, I don't, uh, I'm too cool to wash my hands. I don't know what's going on, man. Yeah, it's just bad. Ugh. Ugh. I guess, like, I guess I would do it. Like, I'm trying to think of a situation where I would do something like that personally. I guess if I just like hated the store or like we're a restaurant. And like they were like they were like dicks, and I'd be like, all right, I'm gonna go in there and just piss everywhere or whatever. Uh, That'd probably be the only way. But even then, I mean, I don't know if I would do it. I'm not saying I would, but that'd be like the only circumstance, and that's kind of you know gross. Yeah. So let's try to do the next three, and then we'll call it. Okay. I'll we'll see what we can do here. All right. OJ, if a cuss word were to slip out and someone heard you, would you start cussing again? So I'll answer this one, then then I'll ask you yours. Okay. And this is from Soapy Plain. So okay. if I were to swear, I don't think I'd start again. I mean, I only recall swearing a few times in my life anyway. One more time isn't going to be it. Right. I think I, I wouldn't start. I don't know. I think right now I'm saving it for some time when I really need to blow someone's mind. So I don't think I would start again. Honestly, honest. Uh, if I if I were really doing this right, I wouldn't even say stuff like Zick and Frell. I would express succinctly and clearly, in plain and proper English, exactly what I'm thinking, and my my reaction. Ah, Zick that, Rambo. Why is it that you don't drink alcohol? Um. Okay, let's talk about this. I'll try to do it in a timely fashion here. Uh, simple answer. I don't drink alcohol because it doesn't do anything positive for me personally. So, I don't consider myself to be part of any religion or, like, any group or anything like that. But I do have, like, a personal strategy, I'll call it, right? That I live by, and it's something that works for me. It helps me day-to-day and year-to-year and all that. And it's not something, like, I talk about often because I'm not trying to push my beliefs or, like, what works for me on anyone else. I don't really understand why people do that kind of thing. 
because what works for me may not work for you. And um, it's kind of a weird idea to think like everyone should do what I do or, or think the way I think, you know? Yeah. So I think a lot of people approach things like that a lot, which is kind of bizarre. Um, so yeah, everyone should do what works for them. And as long as you're not hurting someone else, then by all means do whatever you got to do, whatever you want to do. So I don't drink. That's one of the things I, I live by, right? Mm-hmm. I don't drink any mm-hmm. alcohol. And let's talk about drinking itself. Why do people do it? You know, from a young age, you're kind of told like it's the cool thing to do. Mm-hmm. It's something you need to do in some, in some cases. You know, you need to, this is how you're going to meet people. This is how you're going to have fun. This is what you need to do. You know, we see our parents do it. We see uh, people on TV doing it. Screw all that stuff, okay? All you're really doing is giving money to a corporation in return getting a product that has no value to you whatsoever. <laughs> right? Yeah, but it does taste good. What taste? Okay, well, we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so people like, here's, here's the thing. People say you need it to have like a good time. No. You know, I need true. to have a good time. And I need it to meet people. I need to socialize is what we do, right? And isn't that kind of a, an interesting thing? Like, a product is completely associated with a, you know, basically an emotion or like a feeling or a situation. That's pretty much what they've done with it, right? Yeah. A social situation where people are having fun. There has to be alcohol there. That's all marketing stuff, you know? Mm, yeah, definitely. It's something that's plugged into us. It's in the media. So if you need alcohol to meet people... You know, those aren't the people that you really want to meet. Mm-hmm. All right? And if you need it to have a good time, then you're probably a pretty boring person in the first place. <laughs> I'm sorry to act like that. Aww. But there's a, lot of, you know, there's a lot of things you could be doing that are probably more fun than uh, basically poisoning yourself. <laughs> but here's other, you know, the, other, the other thing people like uh, use it for. You know, people turn it, people turn to it in like during bad times, you're going through like a, b- a bad personal time. Yeah. Then it's like I'm gonna drink Dangerous. to escape, you know, escape problems, things like that. Dangerous, right? Here's the thing with that pain. You know, pain is a part of life. Unfortunately, it is. And in life, you have to take the bad with the good. And if you turn to like alcohol and drugs, in time of you know, in bad times, in time of crisis, you're not going. You're not learning to deal with things properly. You're not learning to deal with things emotionally. And I can say, like, I've been through bad times and bad things, and uh, I got through that stuff, and I feel like, because I didn't do anything like that, if I was to take a bullet today, you know, a metaphorically a bullet, like something bad would happen. Please don't. I, well, it's, something bad will happen to me eventually, it's just how it is, man. But I feel like I'll be better equipped to deal with it emotionally because I've, I've been through these kind of things before, you know? Yeah. So at the end of the day, for me, it's like, this is how I look at it. It's something that alters your normal state of mind. So without it, I feel that I can appreciate the good times better and remember them. And I can deal with the bad times in a much healthier fashion. And, uh, you know, in, in turn, learn from them, become better. And um, that's what works for me personally. Um, so that's it. Well, in my mind, I mean... Drinking, if you if you're ever drinking so much that you might not remember it, you're drinking too much. Everything right. in moderation. And honestly, I don't like drink. Like I drink sometimes. I don't drink that much. I don't drink that often. I don't drink that frequently. But I don't like drinking. If I'm in a bad mood, alcohol is. I'm like, forget it. Nope, I'm banned. Nothing. No. Like if you're in a bad mood and you start drinking, that is a very bad way to go. Because you'll start thinking, oh, I'm in a bad mood. I, I should have a, I should drink. I should drink. I should drink. I'm so sad. I'm going to keep drinking. No. It's, a, right. it's not good. Just just don't do anything more than you want to. You know, If other people want you to do it, don't do it unless you want to do it. Just find right. out what and works you, for you, man. And you brought up like, you know, you know I like the taste of, you know, I guess you like the taste of certain things. Yeah. But it's, not like, it's not good for you. Well, so, same with cupcakes, man. Yeah. But like it's just for me personally, it's rather just not like have it around at all. No, that's fine. That's that's that's, that's good. It's expensive too. Gosh, and these people make so much money off this, which is basically a garbage product. Yeah, it's well. Let's well, we're gonna get. Well, let's let's go away before we start talking about cigarettes. Well, that's not even like on you know that's not even on the radar, man. Like you shouldn't be doing that at all. Yeah. So, like that should that doesn't even deserve to be like met, like talked about. Okay. <laughs> Because like oh. in order to talk about something, you have to have like two sides to the argument. <laughs> there really is no like other side to that. 
Yeah, so, okay. And, uh, and some people, uh, some people turn to alcohol to help them drive cars uh, and to operate machinery. That's not a good idea, so don't do that either. No. All right. All right. So, let's, let's, let's go to regular games players' comment. All right, let's try to do the next two, and then we're good. Hey, John, I listened to this while working on game apps at my job. I'm trying to spread the disease around here. Nice. Well, thank you, sir. Regular games player is a great friend of the show as well. He's uh, always leaving comments and nice stuff. Bolt. So thank you, sir. Nice person. All right, we'll do one more. All right. This is from Street Bat Guy. Johns, what are your opinions on Britain, seeing as most Americans hate us for no reason? Uh, I don't really agree with that. What? Do you agree with that? I don't think... We, no, no, Americans think everyone else hates us. We don't hate you guys. No, I don't really agree. I don't think uh, Americans really hate uh, Britain. I, don't, I really don't agree with that. Um, Simon Cowell, maybe. But Britain, no. Yeah, maybe some people. That's not really one of the... Like, you do from time to time, you'll hear people, like, say something about certain countries. It's never Britain. I think most people are actually from British descent. Well, the East Coast has a lot. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, I don't really find that to be true. I don't think it's one of the countries you ever hear people really... Yeah, I mean, do you know how many Doctor Who fans we have here? And yeah, man, so much great stuff. And, like and Top personal... Gear? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. The American version of Top Gear could be misconstrued as showing that America hates Britain. But it's not true. Yeah, personally, like, I, I, you know, I love a lot of stuff that came out of there. You know, Monty Python. Monty Python, and, uh, the play Jerusalem. Come on, there's all sorts of stuff. No. The Office, big fan. Yeah, Beatles, of course. And I think most people, also Americans, you go like you talk to them, they dig they, something British because it's you know it's easily easily um, imported over like the language barriers and yeah, is extreme. So James Bond, Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, I don't I don't really agree with it. I think that the countries are probably two pretty good friends right now. I mean, yeah. well, Tony Blair back in the day was like all all chummy with Bush, right? Street, street back guy, let's know who these Americans are that are that are giving you trouble. We'll, we'll take care of them. I don't know. What's going on, man? Yeah, we got we got to get a message out. But I have great love for the UK, and I'd like to visit mm-hmm. at some point. Yeah. I kind of speak the same language as them, to a degree. Not, mm-hmm. not really. It's kind of like the uh, American East Coast version of it. But uh, we can kind of talk. And um, viva Britain! <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. All right, one funny thing. Yeah, my, my company's got an office. Oh, my, why didn't I say this before? My yeah. company has an office in Britain, and we have people who work there, and sometimes yeah. they send requests to us, and that was the first time I ever saw somebody say the word cheers. They ended their, you know, their email with cheers. I'm like, I don't, uh, what? Is that good? Is that thanks? Is that goodbye? Like, yeah, is that I was like, thanks a, and goodbye? Like the show Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, it's like cheers is like, have a good day. Cool. Good. Yeah, yeah. We, we learned eventually. Oh, one other thing. P, um, when we're talking about networking equipment in America, we say router. Over there, they say router in some places. Uh, there's a lot of weird uh, pronunciation. Yeah, so I was talking o- over you know our company phone with somebody over there trying to fix something. Like, now if you go to the router, and I had to stop for a second. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, from like, that point the, on, what? I'm like, I can't correct router router. What? I can't correct someone in England, on how to say words in English. So for the rest yeah. of the phone conversation, I said the device, the ne- the equipment. I just didn't want to it. go there. I'll, I will often go around, and when I, when I go somewhere and I'm like, I, I need to find the bathroom, I'll say, where's the water closet? <laughs> I used to do this all the time just to mess with people, and they'd be like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> like, the water closet, sir, where is it? I need to use it. There was a pretty good episode of 30, 30 Rock. There was a British character, and they made up all sorts of strange words saying that they were actual British words. They are making stuff up. Yeah, yeah. Although, oh, you I don't totally know. get away with that. Yeah, Since yeah. I mean, although, honestly, were bicycles ever called velocipedes? I don't, I don't I think so. I had never heard that before. I, I recognized some of the words, but that just didn't make any sense. <laughs> if that's true, then I think bicycle's a little, a little bit clearer. Yeah. Sorry. No, I mean... You gotta love the differences between people, and people people freaked out about that. That's what makes this this the. That's what makes great. the world so interesting. Yes. Imagine everyone did the same stuff, spoke the same way, liked the same things. That'd be a, a pretty awful place. Sounds like high school. Yeah, it's a terrible freaking place. <laughs>
Wah, 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 wah. So yeah, I mean it's uh, it's I think it's awesome. So, Phew. Yes, I think we're I think that'll be do it for the mailbag. All right. You have any uh, final words to say about the, anything? Just guys, keep up your. Do you have questions. any questions you like to ask yourself? Yeah, why do I not wear a helmet constantly since I keep getting hit in the head? <laughs> All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the mailbag today. Definitely keep sending your, your comments and questions via Twitter, via YouTube, via Geekfire Gifts, Snail Mail, whatever you want to do, Smoke Signals. <laughs> uh, I think that we're done. Morse code. Yeah, we're done. Okay. So for, uh, for OJ, I'm John. We're signing off. Thank you for listening to John Rimmer Presents. I hope you enjoyed. My giant swollen bag. Have a good night, everybody. Good night.